Can I call out the fact? Can you pull this up? The fact that Garden of Pan, of course, Garden of Pan Man Four. I love it. I, you know, I love it. I, I, I. I kind of am really excited about this franchise at this point. Like, you push through the hate, you push through the negative comments, and they're just like, we're going at it, boys. We're just going through. <laughs> and I respect it. Like, this is this is legit. It's it's funny, it's meme-ish, it's great. And I plan it on our one, so clearly something has worked. This is awesome. Couldn't have said it any better myself, Matthew. Hey, everybody. So I have an important question to ask. Can you guess what it is? Three, two, one. Did you guess that you should totally hit the like and subscribe button while ringing the bell for notifications for when I post new videos for you to enjoy? If you guessed that, then the answer is no. Although I would like it if you guys still did that. But if you don't want to, you're still cool. The question is, if you guys can stop harassing me about simping for Slow Celine. She gave me her consent, guys, I swear. It has fish in it, and it- <laughs> There is no need to waste the time of myself and the viewers. You should know what Garden of Ban Ban is if you clicked a video discussing the third installment of the series. But if you are new here, let's just say this latest popular entry into the plummeting world of mascot horror... Uh, ...has a lot to be desired, to say the least. The Euphoric Brothers, aka the developers, just ignore the criticism the fans produce, so the issues of features that people bring up are never changed or rectified. And while many of that may still be true to remain in the Garden of Ban Ban 3, I'm going to explain how the Euphoric Brothers slowly improve the game over time, and why Chapter 3 is a major improvement from the previous game, Garden of Ban Ban 2, which had the most problems out of the current three chapters, and why I genuinely get excited for what's to come in the future. So let's dive into the pitch black abyss of the Kindergarten once again. Each game of Garden of Ban Ban has a mascot character as the cover image and title image of each game to let you know who is the main focus of the chapter. This process all began with Jumbo Josh who was the mascot character of the first game. The build up to Jumbo Josh was done in such a poor and horrible fashion that it felt like nothing but a waste of potential in the first chapter representative. The chapter has little build up to the character. You head back to an old closed kindergarten that your child never came back from. You go to investigate and find the mascot character Jumbo Josh as a poster on the wall saying a preschool quote for children. This alone could be substantial buildup, but the problem is that all the other five characters introduced have been given the same treatment, so Jumbo Josh does not stand out here, which removes any feeling or thought of foreshadowing or the character being mysterious or interesting in any way. After you deal with a fetch quest and chase from the Opila bird, you find a secret hatch that leads to the ending where Jumbo Josh shows up and the elevator crashes down. This game is the perfect example of how to not build up a representative character. Opila bird actually got a lot more build up considering the game's runtime and had a final confrontation of the chapter. It actually would have made a lot more sense if Opila was the representative instead. I know you can argue Bendy and the Ink Machine in Chapter 1, but the difference is that the Ink Demon had the whole game to be its rep, while Jumbo Josh, boy over here, only had like 5 seconds. Garden of Ban Ban 2 is slightly better in that regard. While there is still no proper build up to its representative to it, at least it had a twist that shows that you interacted with this character from the start of the chapter. Just like Jumbo Josh, Ban Ban also has the wall images of him that don't stick out from the group other than him being in the center. But it's better because of the later reveal. He pretends to be just an average Joe like you, so he can trick you into getting what he needed without doing the work himself. When you open the final room of the beginning lounge, you look at the note he left behind, and it's a warning. But before you can finish reading, you get knocked out, and the person who was talking to you was Ban Ban. This deception didn't last long, but it was an improvement in this department regardless for the rest of the game he seems to be against you, but then suddenly switches sides at the end, which felt just a bit odd and makes you feel like there is a larger force at play. And now we're on to chapter 3, with Stinger Flynn as its rep. Ban Ban continued to tell you that his goals are to help us, and the next thing to do is to head to the aquatic sector 
while saying that's where he resides. This type of delivery can actually keep you on the seat for knowing that we were going to meet him sooner than we initially thought. And by making your way through the abyss and the giant door in the first hallway corner, we see him firsthand how big he really became. Oh my gosh! With such a massive size showing up at the structure, you get very confused and you start to come up with theories on how he could possibly be the size that he is. It's by far the most inaccurate size considering the scale of the character lineups. When you wake Stinger Flynn, he grabs you while sending you to a dreamscape. That makes you feel like you're tripping balls while he explains his dreams of just wanting to be outside for once. This form of introduction was so good because of its way of setting a mood of buildup and all while not making him come off as just another monster. While also you feel some sort of sympathy for his tragic past simple, yet impossible desires. After you ignore his warnings and sending you to another dreamscape that got you trippin' mad balls, he sends Demon Ban Ban after you until Jumbo Josh stops his plans for the time being. Having Stinger Flynn as a constant threat throughout the chapter was a good idea on paper and execution, while being the last rep buildup, I hope Sheriff isn't treated the same way, so it doesn't get boring and repetitive. But despite that, Stinger Flynn has by far the best representative buildup out of the ongoing series. The puzzles were always a hot controversy of the series because of the poor design choices of them. While some puzzles are good or entertaining, like some of the fetch quests or the new ideas introduced in Chapter 3, the main puzzles are simply to use small buttons and hit them with your drone. And these buttons can usually be located on the wall, or the floor, or the ceiling. This kind of puzzle design is not that bad of a choice. But the problem was the drone was slow compared to the pacing of everything else. That happens around you making the field drone like a pain to work with. In Poppy Playtime, you have similar pacing. But the drone replacement for this game is a grab pack, and it is a lot faster in comparison. The Euphoric Brothers kind of realized this, so they added a feature which was the yellow glass. This glass can't be directed through your drone, rather to make the drone break it, you gotta point the drone to where the glass was in the crossfire. The way the yellow glass was used was not bad in Chapter 1 considering its runtime and introduction. Garden of Ban Ban 2 used this in an awful manner however. It was used pretty good when you had to break the glass in the surgery room to get the key card. But other times it appeared, it just felt like it was random and pointless. Like it wasn't even supposed to be there in the first place. In chapter 3 while also bearing these issues, they did finally use the glass in a creative sense by having it in a window to crawl through the office of the aquatic center. The button usage in chapter 1 was a bit often, but not to the point where it felt overused. Chapter 2 not only did that, but also did it out of insane proportion. So many rooms were filled with these things, and it was highly unnecessary at many points. Chapter 3 took it down a notch and used them in new scenarios that felt like better pacing and timing. They make you go through an upgraded version of the cannon minigame, where instead of using a slow R's cannon that if you mess up once the round starts over, you play as Stinger Flynn and shoot electricity at a much faster pace, making it a lot easier and more tolerable. The second flashback phase of Stinger Flynn wasn't bad either. Adding fast moving buttons that you can actually predict pretty easily if you time it right. And the third phase isn't that bad either. Yes, it moves incredibly fast, but hitting the buttons is actually not that difficult if you can just keep shooting at one corner until you hit them all. It's a little odd, I, do, I will say that, but I just love watching YouTubers' reactions to it though. Done! Last one? Oh my god! What? Uh, no, you're joking. Why did the, did they make What's the, third the main the villain of the? No way. This is gonna be like oh. in Bobby Playtime when it like cuts you off because it's not actually possible. No, it's not. This is actually what it is. How much faster can this thing go? Oh my! Holy! What the heck? Okay. Yeah, this is complete luck. Oh my! 
So what the freak are these games, bro? Is it? Oh my god, no way! <laughs> And along with that, we've got a bunch of new implications of puzzles in the form of boss fights. And we have the first ever boss fight of the series that was a complete surprise. A new twin-headed character known as Tamaki and Chamaki. Those sound like anime names. A half-chameleon and half-turtle hybrid that was meant to be a construction mascot of some kind. You have to use the drone to hit the buttons that are lit up to make rockets deposit so you can drop one on Chamaki's tongue three times. This boss was very fun for me, but my brother was going through a rage fest because of how annoying their attacks are. And last but not least, the Nabnolina surgery. You have to bring Nabnolina to life so you can get Nab Nab out of his room to continue the campaign. This puzzle is not explained well on how to do, and I died a fair amount of times to it. You have to hit the buttons lit with your drone and then fix the pipe colors, then create the color with a simple click of two buttons, then grab a needle to collect the gyvanium and stick it in her. I also really loved this puzzle as well, for being very creative and unique. It was just... I hope they don't get more complicated than this in the future, just say it. <laughs> Lastly, is personal opinion. This future knowledge I share will be undoubtedly subjective due to the fact that personal opinions vary to an immense extent. But I want to share my personal opinion on Chapter 3 because I like expressing myself on a public standard, and to see if anyone were to agree. I'm not sorry, Garden of Ban Ban 3 is a game I really like. Not saying that it deserves to be on the same tier as FNAF or Bendy, but its simplistic style is something I have always cherished to an extent. I love the ever-expanding roster of characters even if ones I want to make an appearance don't until the next chapter that comes out. I'll be patient for the next one, all while getting surprised by new characters that aren't hinted at. I love a game series, or series in general, that may include a bunch of characters for the sake of variety, and while the story isn't improved on in a drastic sense, I like that they are actually trying to put some effort into it by continuously adding details with each installment. My most favorite part about Chapter 3 was the Sector Room at the very end known as the Progressive Sector. It included a character that's been hinted at ever since Chapter 1 if you were to break the game, which is known as Tarta Bird. I really like this name. By the way, Opila and Tarta mean cake in different languages. I, I don't know why. And also including a, a stupid character like Mr. Kebab, and then repeatedly having him say the same crap over and over again after you deal with the boss fight, it just made me laugh so hard. Also while having the baby Opila jump on the back of Tarta Bird, all while you get to ride him, it was so beautiful. To succeed in the final puzzle of running away from Ban Ban, bam, Jumbo Josh shows up, picks up Ban Ban, smacks him to the ground, Stinger Flynn interrupts, Jumbo Josh gives Stinger Flynn the WWE slam down approach, and then bam, you get to go down the elevator and the chapter pretty much ends like the last one. I'm going to say this is a lot better than Chapter 2 because, hey, at least it happens right after this awesome, amazing event that got me 1.9k views just for clipping it. Yes, this game has always bothered me with its wasted potential, but at least it's a story I don't have to wait forever on. I know all the good mascot horror titles and fan titles release much slower because they take much more effort and time to produce, and I can respect that. But I was getting sick of it with how long a lot of them took, or still taking. I like Garden of Ban Ban for its release schedule. It's such a refreshing change of pace that I can desperately accept. I'm happy knowing there is at least one indie title I don't have to wait forever for another installment. Puzzles can be a rage inducing and annoying at times, but overall I love the series just for what it's trying to be, and that is my personal opinion. Thank you so much for watching, I've been Sir Yaluzel, and I'll see you all in the next Indie Horror Drop. Love y'all.